I wanted to make this video because I was doing a live stream yesterday. If you guys haven't seen that live stream, uh, check yesterday's upload. But we went live yesterday and I kind of had, and I discussed this more in the live stream, kind of had like a little you know light bulb going off event where I think I figured out why the 8HP90 from the Hellcat swap from the Dodge Charger, why that failure occurred and why that transmission exploded and all that. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll link it above here, check it out. I'll quickly go over it, but it's not the main focus of this. If you guys wanna see more in depth on the failure, how it happened, you can watch it happen, you can see us tearing the thing down. But essentially my 8HP90 is now officially in two pieces, actually more than two pieces, but it split the transmission completely in half, broke right down the center of the transmission, the only thing holding my transmission together was that oil pan. As soon as I took it off, the thing literally just fell into two pieces. Busted the main shaft in it, along with a bunch of other components. Long story short, that thing grenaded. Before I walk away from that though, I wanna point something out. A lot of guys said that, you know, maybe it was the drive shaft vibration. We got the drive shaft inspected even after this failure and it still balanced out true. The original drive shaft, which is kind of what we're gonna get into in this video, the original drive shaft for the Hellcats are a two-piece design. They have a carrier bearing, and that's kind of what I realized yesterday. The drive shaft that we're using now is a one-piece instead of a two-piece. Like I said, the Hellcat uh, drive shaft is a two-piece, but there was some stuff that I noticed when I picked everything up from the uh, wrecking yard. So we ended up buying this swap in the fall of last year from a wrecking yard with a 90-day warranty kind of standard from your average uh, wrecking yard. Um, I do have the new transmission so I'll probably use this as a reference or you know a discussion piece so we can talk about this. If we had a vibration coming from the drive shaft, chances are because I've seen pictures of them online, we would have broken something over here and we would have seen a failure around here. You gotta remember, the failure on mine was here, like halfway through the transmission, this whole piece broke. The transmission, this is a replacement one that we're gonna be putting in, we're just waiting for a few more parts. Obviously you saw the other one completely busted. This is another 8HP90 from a Hellcat. Um, but the transmission, you know, broke in the center and it, the wrecked vehicle that it came from, which I'm gonna show you guys in a second, sustained a severe side impact. And I wanna show you guys some of the footage I was reviewing from the car. I'm pretty sure what happened was, you gotta remember the transmission is supported. Usually there's a brace right here. I've removed it because we have a custom one going on. Um, but transmission is supported here. And then the original design has a mid uh, carrier bearing, probably about two feet away or so. And there's a carrier bearing. Well, what I noticed was when I received everything, I got this box of bolts and I've since thrown them out because I really didn't need them and I didn't know why they were in there. But I received a box of hardware that they asked me if I wanted from the vehicle. It had all these bolts and you know all the hardware from when they completely dismantled it. Um, they gave me a cardboard box full of it. Inside that cardboard box was a bunch of ball bearings. I didn't really pay too much attention or didn't really, you know, put too much emphasis on it at the time. I just thought, what the heck are all these ball bearings in this box? And they were full of grease and there was a bunch of grease in the box. So I ended up washing all those parts, um, cleaning up all those nuts and bolts and all that stuff. And I just, all the ball bearings that were in it, I tossed them. I might still have some of them around here, but uh, for the most part, I just tossed them. You know, what the heck am I gonna do with a bunch of ball bearings besides, you know, go play marbles or something. So that kind of occurred to me yesterday that what that means is I don't think there was any reason for them to sit there and just, you know, those bearings and a big bearing of that nature is pretty hard to destroy. There's no reason why the bearings uh, would have been dismantled. So what I think happened, and I'm gonna show you guys the footage of the car because I was reviewing it from when I was looking at the wrecked car. It, the transmission tunnel looked pretty good up to here, but right around here is where you can see the chassis sustained the most damage, where it hit a pole or a tree or whatever the car wrapped itself around. And you gotta remember that's right where the carrier bearing would have been and that shaft would have went from here to there and i think this the force got put on that and the only thing supporting this is the transmission and the carrier bearing if it had such a force to where it broke that bearing but it was supported on this side transmission 
I'm willing to bet this got pushed, a force got exerted from this side. Again, the damage was on this side, pushed here, and it bent the shaft inside the transmission. I'm not a transmission expert, but I'm willing to bet that the force didn't necessarily crack the case, but probably put enough force on this to bend the components in the transmission, and it was sitting there going through the transmission in a bent fashion. Once I got up to a certain speed, that's when it exploded. It didn't explode on launch. Um, our original drive shaft had a slip yoke on it. We checked pinion angle, all that stuff. You guys can watch all those videos. So it wasn't from anything to do with that. But again, the carrier bearing that was right here was severely damaged. And I'm willing to bet that force got put on that small section of the drive shaft, pressed on here, broke the carrier bearing, and bent something in the transmission. So let me go and show you guys that footage now of when I picked up the car and you guys can see exactly the impact on the car that it came out of. Transmission is all here. So we've got everything you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and it looks like we might pull the trigger. And one other thing, so you see the fuse box, you see the ABS pump and the whole harness and stuff like that. Okay, so I just wanna take a quick snapshot here, you guys. This is the donor car, the wrecked car that we got everything from. You can see right here where it sustained that impact. It is perfectly right where that drive shaft would be, right on that small section, right between the carrier bearing and the tail shaft. I think that's what did it. Um, we're gonna actually get the, the dash with all the harness and the steering column and all that stuff too, so. And then here's the chassis, it's completely bare. So we have everything, you guys. Okay, and then check this out, you guys. So I was just going over the footage. I haven't spent enough time around the Charger chassis to know if this is the exact piece, but does look like the front half of the drive shaft. Could be from another vehicle, but does look very similar and it's right next to the car. Seats, but they're just gonna toss them. Those are trashed. I don't think we looked, but there's not gonna be anything in there that we need, but that's what's left of the car, guys. There's just absolutely nothing left of this thing. Look at that. Okay, and here's another angle, you guys, without the doors. You can see exactly where it hit, exactly where the force was taken. It's like perfectly where that portion of the drive shaft would be. So I think it's just way too coincidental that we had the failure we did, and given exactly where that impact was, I think it's kind of putting everything together. All right, so there you guys have it. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think? Do you think this theory stands strong? Do you think that's what it is? I'm getting another built drive shaft. Uh, John's Drive Lines is hooking us up with a aluminum shaft just so there's less weight on the back of the tail shaft. And also I was looking, that is a popular upgrade for Hellcats is to get away from the two piece design and go to a one piece solid drive shaft as well. So. Um, I think we'll be okay with that, but I'm just trying to rationalize what the failure was so that it obviously doesn't happen again. But I don't have any other explanation at this time other than that. Again, the drive shaft checked out, our pinion angle is okay, it had a slip on it, it didn't break on acceleration or deceleration. Again, when we were test driving uh, the vehicle, it did have a vibration um, at higher speeds, but I didn't think it was going to be a vibration that was going to ultimately explode the transmission, but obviously. Uh, we were wrong about that, but comment down below what you guys think what caused failure. Do you think this makes sense? Um, check out the earlier videos as well from when we picked it up You guys can go check out all the footage from that see if you catch any details and uh, let me know from there So thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed this video Make sure you give it a thumbs up before you take off check out the other videos on the channel And we'll see you guys on the next video I'm about to put this thing together to try to make an event here shortly So I'm at a race against time and we'll see you guys on the next video